An elementary school boy trying to mimic an attack from the Naruto series ended up buried and suffocating in a sandbox while his friends laughed on the sidelines. Now I'm sure that most of you out there watching my channel probably know what Naruto is. But just in case you don't know, Naruto was a Japanese manga and anime sensation that debuted in the late 90s, early 2000s. A few years later, it became a hit overseas as well, becoming massively popular in the United States. There was everything from manga and anime, of course, to games, toys, movies, even a trading card game. Merch everywhere. The series was mainly targeted towards teenagers, with the TV show being PG-rated and most of the video games being T-rated, but you know how these things are. Of course, kids started loving it too, especially after the show started airing on Cartoon Network. It was fairly violent, but not to an extreme degree, about what you'd expect from a teen anime. You know, about Dragon Ball level. Maybe a little more. Uh, one article about this subject actually said, uh, It's insanely popular right now with boys about 10 to 15, similar to Batman when we were kids. Which is kind of one of the most out-of-touch things I've read in a really long time. It's like, explain it like I'm five, except explain it like I'm old. <laughs> Out of all the series that were ongoing at the time that really got the ire of the media for being too violent, Naruto wasn't really one of them. It barely made a mark on the whole violence in animation argument as a whole. That was until today's incident came along. It was March 8th of 2008. A boy named Cody, in elementary school in the fifth grade, was getting into some imaginary shenanigans with his friends. Cody was usually into action, video games, and superheroes, and a lot of his play seemed to center around that. Cody, 10 years old, was playing with some other friends outside of his friend Everett's house. It was a Saturday morning and all the boys were gathered up. It was then that they decided to play ninjas, with a notably large Naruto influence. So, fantasy ninjas. So in the series there was a character named Gara. Gara had all of these crazy sand-related moves, like he would lock people in tombs of sand, or he would use sand as kind of a shield to protect himself, things like that. Cory and his friends remembered these sand-related moves and decided to see how they would work in real life. Kids are no strangers to the sand, and a lot of kids have buried themselves in the sand at some point. I mean, I know I did. But Cory, however, was a little different in that he decided he would bury himself headfirst in the sand. This was when they really started freestyling, as just burying one's own head in the sand wasn't really something from the show. If anything, they used the show as kind of a jumping off point and then just decided to do something different and weird entirely. Cody's half-brother and three other boys helped to bury him in the sand. This, as you can imagine, is where things started to go wrong. After a while, Cody started thrashing around, waving his arms and legs. His friends assumed he was joking, just putting on a show, so they just stood there and laughed. However, after a while, they did start to believe that something was wrong. When they decided enough was enough, they unburied his head and pulled him out of the sand. They started yelling for help, and nearby adults ran over to give Cody CPR. They called the police and continued to try to help him breathe until they arrived. They weren't able to revive him, and eventually Cody was sent off to the Providence Everett Medical Center. They, too, were unable to do much, and he was soon flown all the way to Seattle. He remained in critical condition for two days until Monday, when he ultimately passed away at about 3.35 p.m., surrounded by his family. He passed peacefully with his family at his side, they said in a statement. We appreciate all the support and prayers that we have received. The family then went on to say that it was the Naruto TV show that convinced him to bury himself in the sand head first. However, the county sheriff asserted that the boy's death was merely a simple accident. It just wasn't really that deep. The other boys who were at the scene were interviewed by the police, saying that they thought he was joking when he started to flail around, but by the time they pulled him out, he had already stopped breathing. Things were somber at Cody's school, Silver First Elementary, after that. It was a lot for his young classmates to take in. Cody was a fairly popular kid with a lot of friends, so it affected a lot of people, at least on some level, even if only reminding them of their own mortality. The principal sent letters home with the students to let their parents know what had happened. A lot of the parents weren't quite ready to handle all of these questions about death. One parent said, I have a third grader at home, so he's going to come home with some information. So certainly the need to edit, filter, and hear what he thinks about what he heard is important. 
The school eventually brought in some grief counselors to help out. While deciding on how exactly to lay him to rest, Cody's family decided to donate his organs. His organs went on to be donated to five different people, with ages ranging from eight years old all the way up to 55. His father felt that he had finally become a hero in death, just as he wanted. The family set up a memorial fund online for people to donate to his sudden funeral. Once the funeral finally came, about 150 people attended the service and paid their respects. A man named Doug Gentile, the director of research for the National Institute on Media and the Family, was interviewed about this incident. He said, regarding violence in anime, To my knowledge, there is no such research specifically targeting anime. But what we do know is that media in general do have a very large effect on people. He added that this isn't really a modern problem. People have always been mimicking what they see in media to some extent. With, you know, 50 years ago, kids were putting on towels like capes and jumping off roofs to act like Superman. He said that the only difference is that a lot of series these days have stunts that are simply more realistic and easy to imitate. Especially now that there are kind of choreographed fight scenes taking prominence over, you know, TNT, bombs, things like that. Basically, it's simply just easier to mimic something that isn't superhuman in nature. A lot of the aggression in Tom and Jerry is not easy to copy, he said. You won't have access to a ball of TNT to stuff in your brother's mouth, but you might have access to a sandbox. It's a horrible tragedy, but it's not surprising that at some point somebody is going to try almost anything they see. A pediatrics professor at the University of Washington said that, while he believes there is a link between early television viewing among children and a bit of antisocial behavior, Naruto itself was no more harmful than any other TV program out there. Typically, parents don't complain about program content until it's too late, he said. The fact is, kids and teenagers do imitate the foolish things they see on TV, sometimes to disastrous effect. I would urge parents to view all TV content in this light. He added that, if parents don't want their kids to imitate anything they watch on TV, they simply just shouldn't let them watch TV. Two years later, Corey's parents decided to file a wrongful death suit against the other kids who helped bury him in the sand. The suit alleged that the other kids were negligent in their behavior at best. They watched for 8 to 10 minutes as Cody Porter kicked, struggled, and wiggled to free himself. While the defendants did not murder Cody Porter, they failed to exercise ordinary care, said their lawyer, Eric Fong. Fong further alleged that the other kids laughed at Cody as he continued to struggle in the sand, which they very well may have done as they themselves have said that they thought he was joking. But the lawyer further asserts that the other kids prevented him from freeing himself by putting such a heavy amount of sand on him that he couldn't possibly get up. He further baselessly speculated that they may have held him down as well. The lawsuit also went after a woman named Holly Hansen, who was the only adult at home at the time. He said that she was negligent in her supervision of the children. Interestingly, this suit made no mention of Naruto at all. It didn't make any mention of anything that may have influenced the act. Fong declined to discuss what may have led to the boy being buried in the sand in the first place. I get how horrible it is that these kids are getting sued. It bothers us that these little kids have to go through this unnecessarily, Fong said. It wasn't done lightly. When police interviewed the people at the scene, including the other kids, they found no evidence of criminal behavior. It appears to be a very sad accident, said the county sheriff's office spokeswoman Rebecca Hoover. Douglas Gentile said that there hasn't been any specific research as to what effect Naruto may have had, but he did say that the death was a reminder that children, and really all people, learn from seeing other people do something and copying it. Kids are little sponges. They learn from everything, he said. There isn't something magical about this show. He added that, out of all the media out there, any media that showcases realistic, imitatable crimes is usually more of a negative influence than sci-fi battle scenes. He said that the most important thing to do is just talk to your kids about they watch. It's simple as that. Like Gentile, Nadine Caslow, chief psychologist at Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta and a professor at Emory University School of Medicine, said that, It's important to note that, even though there are so many kids pretending to be superheroes and fantasy characters all around the world, Cody's story is extremely rare in nature. It can, however, raise a bit of awareness about what could possibly happen. You don't want to blame the show because millions of kids watch the show and don't take it to this limit, she said. It's not the show's fault. It's not the kid's fault. It's not the parent's fault. That's what an accident is. 
So once again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you don't mind it being a little more casual than usual. If you thought it was interesting, please give it a like. It helps me out in the algorithm. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. You can always unsub later if you find out I'm a douche. If you want, go ahead and add me on social media. I mean, you know how YouTube is. If anything were ever to happen to this channel, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear about it. And then if you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below, where you can always see videos early and uncensored. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. JB Funk, Raven, Entrepreneur, Grack, Salad, Kevin, AMCMT, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Tang, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafranz, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Buffazerk, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You probably cost more than a brand new television. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you and good night.